Hi guys, I wanted to talk about a book that I've seen a few people talk about on BookTube, but not many. Um, I wanted to review this book. It's called um, The Goalie's Anxiety, The Penalty Kick by Peter Handka. Um, just as a little bit of a warning, this review has some spoilers in it, so um, if you don't want uh, the essential plot points revealed, go ahead and uh, bypass this review. So in this novel, um, Peter Hanka puts on full display the self-conscious experimentation for which we've become so well known over the past four decades or so. This is uh, Peter Hanka's third novel, by my count, uh, originally published in Germany in 1970, and his first to be translated into English in 1972. Uh, and because of its length, it's it's very short, as you can tell. It's only about 130 pages. I would suggest that this is a good starting place for those who think that they might be interested in the voice of Peter Handke's early fiction. While the plot is maybe not the most important aspect of the book, uh, a précis, I think, would probably be imp important and, and relevant. So here are the spoilers. Uh, there's this guy named Block, uh, who's a construction worker, and he's laid off in the first sentence of the book. And in a kind of heightened euphoria, Block checks into a ho hotel with only a suitcase, occasionally leaving to visit the cinema. He notices this young woman there uh, and spends the night with her. And then for some reason, or maybe for no reason at all, Block ends up murdering her in her apartment. Emotion and motive and fury uh, and intention are all completely cut out from the tone of the novel, even in relation to an act of seemingly senseless murder. The reader never learns if Block is exhilarated or ashamed or scared of being caught. But shortly afterwards, he leaves uh, for a small town on the Austrian border, where still more events occur that should phase him, but they never seem to. The last few pages shed light on the meaning of the title in a way that is uh, simply too good to divulge here, so I won't uh, tell you about that part. In the novel, Handke uses some really smart social critique, especially on the subjects of consumerism and the meaningless uh, meaninglessness of, of small talk shared with strangers that you sometimes run into in the novel. Um, there's this little exchange that I think he over that block over here is in a restaurant. Um, there's this one woman telling another woman, we all we we buy all of our dresses ready made uh, or she tells him and then she tells him, you know, we do each other's hair. And this woman doesn't really know him. He's just, she's just making small talk with him. And you can feel the sort of crushing smallness. Um, she tells him, in the summer, it's usually getting light by the time we finally get home. I prefer the slow dances. Uh, on the trip home, we don't joke around as much anymore. Then we forget about talking. Uh, so Hanka sort of really smartly communicates the, uh, you know, the smallness of, of small talk and how awkward and weird it can be when it's with someone who's enough of a stranger. Um, another time, Block compulsively asks what everything is worth, which is another sort of cutting point of uh, the discussion of consumerism, including the furniture in, in his hotel room, as if he's fascinated and compelled by the idea that money could be the sole metric of worth. To borrow from, uh, you know, the, the vocabulary of Ferdinand Tonys, the sociologist, uh, there's a sense of decadence there, you know, the fall from a traditional Gemeinschaft community to a post-industrial Gesellschaft, you know, you can, you can feel this sort of loss of community and this commodification of everything, wherein 
the old ways of communicating, emoting, and going about our day-to-day lives have been radically reconfigured, especially around things, commodities, being a consumer and not being a citizen. Um, while I don't read German, I have the, the feeling that the work of the translator, who is Michael Roloff in this instance, had a really big part in achieving uh, these effects, which um, were, came off really quite well. The most engaging part of the novel, at least for me, was its experimental style. Of course, depending on personal preferences, some might find it more frustrating. Um, Hanko writes in really flat, uh, declarative, staccato, Hemingway-esque sentences, uh, which has the odd effect of spreading Bloch's emotional numbness, um, numbness to even the reader himself or herself. The novel focuses in on language to show its strengths, but also its glaring flaws. You get the feeling that Hanke has quarried the words for his novella over a period of months or years, never with the, with, never with the naive assumption that they could ever be ready-made tools for our passive use. And in doing so, he issues forth a, a thoroughly invigorating critique of language and of the use of language. Um, it's kind of like reading Wittgenstein for the first time, had Wittgenstein written fiction. All in all, it was not a wholly unpleasurable experience, even if it was more experimental than most fiction I do read. Um, but I appreciated this novel more than I enjoyed it, I would say. Uh, Hanka certainly does bring a lot to the table as far as questioning what fiction does, how it's performed, and what it can do for us. Um, if you like your fiction to delve into these questions, you might find something like this uh, very fun and very enjoyable. If not, and you haven't read anything by him, you may want to read this anyway. It's, like I said, quite short, and Hanka um, has been one of has been called one of the greatest living writers in the German language today. So it may be worth checking out. Peter Hanke's The Goalie's Anxiety at the Penalty Kick.